in the last stream, we of course started out uh, with the new Skybees mod pack here, and we made our way through most of the first quest line here, the Ex Nihilo quest line, and we have pretty much everything done apart from a few of the mesh quests up at the top of the quest line, um, as well as uh, a few of the quests at the bottom here, those being uh, to get 64 cobblestone, gravel, sand, and dust, and also to get one buzzing doll, which of course is the one thing currently standing between us uh, and actually getting into bees, specifically resourceful bees, which are going to allow us uh, to automatically start to get uh, some of the you know, more pressing resources that we are going to need uh, to press forward into some of the other mods. Now, before I get into that, I have, as you can see, made a few changes to the base since the end of the last stream. Most of the stuff that I've done has just been reorganizing things that we already had and making the island a little bit bigger, kind of giving us more space to work with. And I've also gone ahead and gathered quite a bit more cobblestone that we have over in here. Uh, and I also sifted a bit more gravel to make these hoppers right here. You'll know in the last stream, we made the dirt generator and the cobblestone generator, but we couldn't actually use them because they don't automatically eject their output. So you don't actually get the cobblestone until you have a way to pull it out of the generator. Of course, right now, everything is being deposited into regular old chests. And so I think one of the first things that we should do here is probably look at getting some storage drawers. These are going to allow us to hold a lot more of any one given item, like dirt and cobblestone. Um, but right now you can, of course, hold 27 stacks of any given item uh, in one chest, which equates to uh, 1,728 items in total, uh, whereas a storage drawer by default can do 2,048 items, but then as you upgrade it, they can hold more and more and more uh, up into the you know tens of thousands of items uh, if you fully upgrade them to the max. So uh, let's go ahead and make some of those. They're fairly easy to make. They're made with regular chests, for now I'll make two, and wood, like so. So I'm just thinking that we break these for now. We are gonna get a lot of dirt spewing everywhere, but that is fine, and it's going to allow us to nice and easily drop down the storage drawer, and then if you double right click on the storage drawer, it will pull uh, all of the items out of your inventory uh, if they match the item being stored. And as you can see right now, we have 1,750 dirt, and that number is of course increasing, and that will keep increasing up to 2,048, at which point uh, the drawer will be full. And as mentioned a minute ago, we can upgrade them with these upgrades here, uh, starting with Obsidian and going all the way up to Emerald. Right now, that's a little unfortunate because right now we don't have a way of producing a large amount of Obsidian. We can, of course, use water and lava in a, um, a barrel here, but right now we don't have lava being made automatically, and it is also quite slow uh, to make in the, uh, the crucible there, so uh, we're probably not going to make any upgrades in today's stream. However, I do think that uh, 2,048 dirt and 2,048 cobble are probably going to be more than enough for, uh, for today's stream anyway. So the plan for today's stream is going to be to start generating resources with bees here. So... I think one of the first things that we should do is probably look at getting a beehive up and running. And as you can see in the quest book here, we start by making the, the basic beehive from Minecraft. And the quest book does tell us here that we can uh, craft a couple of spawn eggs for certain bees. For example, marble, sand, cobblestone, coal, gravel, dust, uh, sieve, RGB, icy, zombie, and snowball. All of these bees can be crafted in a crafting table. Uh, for example, if we look at the uh, sand bee, this one right here, we can craft the spawn egg with four honeycomb blocks, four honey blocks, and one sand. Now, of course, to get the honeycomb blocks and the honey blocks, we are, of course, going to have to get regular bees and then work from there, which is, of course, where the doll over here comes into play. To make this, we have to get four yellow dye, which should be easy enough, uh, one flower, any flower will do. Uh, it's showing Britannia flowers right now, but we could use a, a poppy or a dandelion or anything like that. Two glowstone, which we can get from sifting dust, and then one porcelain doll, which requires five porcelain clay, and then either an emerald or a diamond, both of which we can now get uh, thanks to the iron stiffened mesh that we made at the end of the last stream. However, we are going to have to sift probably quite a large amount of gravel because the odds of getting a diamond or an emerald from the sifting here are not particularly high. Yeah, 0.8%. So we're going to have to sift more than 100 gravel on average to get one diamond or one emerald. But thankfully, we do have a few hundred gravel here, so really getting it shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Especially when you can sift quite quickly. And there we go, look at that, we have one diamond. Nice. So there we go, a few stacks of gravel later, we have eight diamonds, three emeralds, as well as quite a few other resources as well that we can process a little later on in today's stream. As for the 
porcelain clay, we are, of course, going to have to get uh, more clay and more bone meal. I think right now we are out of basically both of those, although I did notice that there is a quest right here that does give us clay as a reward. We'll take that. And bone meal we can, of course, get from dust. And now that we have basically an unlimited amount of cobblestone, albeit coming in fairly slowly from the generator here, uh, we should be able to get large amounts of dust fairly easily by simply grabbing the cobblestone, placing it down with the wand, hammering it into gravel, and then into sand, and then into dust. So a few stacks of dust later, we can go ahead and sift those down. And uh, thankfully we do have the uh, the new iron stiffened mesh here. So we are getting uh, extra things as well, like redstone and a blaze powder, as well as that glowstone uh, that we are going to need. And so if we go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five of those, uh, we should then be able to combine those up with an emerald. We do have more diamonds than emeralds, but you do get more dolls from using an emerald here than you do from diamonds. We get six as opposed to four. So I think it is worth using the emerald here. And at that point, the only thing that we're missing is the beehive frame and then the flowers. And uh, I have gone ahead and made this little platform here of grass a little bit bigger between streams to allow us to uh, hopefully get some flowers fairly easily. And if we do take a look at the recipe for the first tier of beehive, so the basic beehive is from Minecraft, but then there are tiered beehives from the bee resourceful mod or the resourceful bees mod. And to make the first tier of beehive from the resourceful bees mod, uh, we need the regular uh, beehive surrounded by grass. So what we should probably do is once again, grab another set of flint shears. At this point in time, we could look, and actually we do already have some flint shears here. Uh, we could look at making regular iron shears, but I still think our supply of iron, um, while definitely larger than it was previously, is not quite uh, large enough to where we should be uh, wasting it on things like shears, especially when we can make other shears. Now, one cool thing about the uh, the new version of Batania here is you can actually use it to get pretty much all of the dyes in the game. For example, here, if we can get some mystical yellow petals, we can use those to get yellow dye. And so it might not be a terrible idea to look at uh, getting and using the floral fertilizer that we have and that we made in the last stream. So when you right click on grass with floral fertilizer, mystical flowers will spawn. Uh, this time we got two green and one orange which is not really what we're after, we're after yellow. What we can do here though, is we can make more floral fertilizer using these flowers. So uh, to make floral fertilizer, just like in the last stream, we need bone meal and then four of any kind of dye. With the mystical flowers here, you can craft these down into petals. And then from there, you can craft the petals with a pestle and mortar to make the dye equivalent to the color of the mystical petal you have. And the pestle and mortar, thankfully, is pretty easy to make. One stick, one plank, and one bowl. So bull, stick, and plank. That gets us the pestle and mortar. And if we craft these up, we get green dye. And then we can craft the green dye with bone meal to get another floral fertilizer, which in turn is going to get us even more flowers. So um, what we can also do at that point, if we want to get more of any one specific dye, for example, black dye here, I think is definitely something we're going to need later on in today's stream. What we can do is we can plant the mystical petal before we turn it into black dye by just right clicking onto some grass like so. You can then bone meal the petal to make one of these uh, tall mystical black petals. And then at that point, if you shear that petal, we get a tall mystical black flower, which we can then craft into four petals. So we've essentially turned the two mystical black petals that we had previously into eight mystical black petals using two bone meal there. So we can actually duplicate the dye, which we can of course now make with the pestle and mortar infinitely, which is super nice. So ideally, if we can get a mystical yellow flower, we could uh, fairly easily get all of the yellow dye required for making these buzzing dolls. And I have a feeling we're probably going to want to make more than one buzzing doll. I think we're, to, we're going to want to get at least two to allow us to breed the two bees that we do get to get a third bee and then to move on from there. So let's see then, can we get even more of these? Uh, let's get uh, another floral fertilizer. And I would really love some yellow dye. Look at that, perfect. So there's our mystical yellow flower. So here we can just take our yellow petals, plant them, bone meal them, shear them, craft them, and then you can do the same again, right, to get even more if you wanted to. You do have to break them with shears. If you break these without shears, I'm fairly certain you get nothing. So uh, do bear that in mind. But at this point, we have basically the equivalent of 17 yellow dye here. Let's go ahead and grab at least eight. And then from there, we should be able to craft, at the very least, two of these uh, buzzing dolls, right? We have the glowstone, and uh, we do need some string if we're going to make more 
of the um, the frames. But uh, at that point, we're just missing any kind of flower. So I guess we'll probably go ahead and use some of the flowers that we have multiple of here. There's one. And there's two. So now, if we were to right-click this buzzing doll onto this wooden barrel here, a bee would spawn. I don't think we should do that here, because, of course, right now we're surrounded by nothingness, and if I were to spawn a bee in, I think it's highly likely the bee would just fly away, fall into the void, and would never be seen again. And so I think at this point in time, it's probably going to be a good idea for us to build some kind of box, some kind of room, to actually store all of our bees in so that they don't escape. And I think we'll probably kind of build them along this, like, um, part of the island that we have here. I think we'll build, like, a few different bee boxes. Because I think we're probably going to want to have a different box for different bees that generate different resources. So, a little while later, and we have something that looks a little bit like this. Just a very basic uh, wooden box here with uh, mostly glass walls. And the idea here is that we're going to hopefully spread our grass over into this room. And we want everything in here to be grass. I think we can expedite that process using grass seeds that I think we do have. Yeah, we have six of them up at the top here. So we can speed things up just a little bit uh, by doing something like that. And uh, hopefully that will spread nice and quickly. We'll have a bunch of grass in there. But uh, essentially, we're going to put the beehive uh, somewhere in the middle of this room. We're going to trap a bee in there. And so for that, we are going to have to get some kind of door in the future a better option might be something like the uh, player filter. This one right here, the mob filter that filters players. Uh, as you can see in the description, it allows players to walk through it, but doesn't allow other mobs to walk through it. So we could put two uh, like player filter blocks here. We could walk straight through them, but the bees can't fly through them. So we could es essentially trap our bees in this room, uh, which is the entire idea. But uh, another thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to automate the harvesting of honeycomb. So for those unaware, the way that this works right now, you take a beehive, you place it down. You put down flowers around the beehive, and then you can spawn bees nearby. The bees will go to the flowers, receive pollen, fly back to the beehive, drop the pollen off. They stay in the beehive for, I think, about two minutes. And then when they leave, the amount of honey in the beehive goes up. And each beehive has what I believe is called a honey level. Um, I was reading through the 50 Shades of Bee right here, and if we look at tiered beehives, uh, for the uninitiated, when a bee collects pollen from a flower, the bee will then fly into a hive, and after a period of time will emerge to repeat the process. When the bee is released from the hive, a honeycomb will have been generated. When the honey level reaches five, the combs can be collected. So, essentially, this beehive, the basic beehives, I think can have three bees in them at any given time, and I think... Each time a bee goes in and leaves, the honey level goes up by one. So if we had three bees in here, they'd all go in, they'd all wait two minutes, they'd all come out, the honey level would go up to three, then they'd all go back in again, they would do the same thing, they'd leave, the honey level would go up to five. At that point, uh, we could then use a set of shears on the beehive, and we would generate some honey. That's the idea. Now, if we want to automate that, we can do so uh, with a dispenser, which is exactly what this image right here is depicting. Right here, they have the hive, they have a comparator, redstone, repeaters, and a dispenser. The idea here is that the comparator outputs a redstone signal equal to the hive's honey level, and so they have one, two, three, four, five pieces of redstone. Therefore, when this piece of redstone lights up, triggering these repeaters here, that will trigger the dispenser to shear the hive, at which point honeycombs will fly everywhere. That's the idea. The useful thing about this, A, is that it's automated, but also you don't anger the bees. If you manually right-click on a beehive and shear it while there are bees inside of it, the bees will come out and will attack you because they're angry. If they do attack you, after a day they will die, which is not what we want. If you use the dispenser, I'm pretty sure they don't get angry. So, ideally, chat, this is something that we want to set up. We want to get a comparator a few repeaters, and some redstone as well as a dispenser to automate this kind of process. Twitch chat does make a good point. You can, if you want, put a campfire underneath the beehive, which will effectively smoke the beehive. And there is a bit more about this in the book here. But if you put a campfire beneath the beehive, it will smoke the beehive. And then when you shear it, it will not anger the bees. 
you could do that, but you still have to ho manually harvest the beehives. I think doing it with the dispenser and thus automating the process is definitely going to be a better way of us doing it. Most of this stuff is going to be fairly easy for us to make. The only thing that we currently can't make is the comparator because we don't have any nether quartz. However, we can get nether quartz by sifting soul sand. And you're actually guaranteed to get one nether quartz from one soul sand if you have the iron stiffened mesh here. So to get soul sand, all we have to do is put regular sand into witch water. And as luck would have it, we do have witch water. Unfortunately, I've just smelted all of our um, all of our sand into glass, but uh, thankfully we can get more sand fairly easily by hammering down some gravel. If we put that gravel into the wooden barrel here, we get soul sand. If we go ahead and sift that soul sand, we get another quartz. And so being able to, uh, and, and so we should now be able to fairly easily make pretty much everything on this list here. So a bunch of stone later, and we should be pretty much good to go here. Um, if we're going to do it the way they show here, we are going to need four redstone repeaters, uh, which means we're going to need uh, at least eight redstone torches. We might need a little bit more redstone because then of course we need uh, three more here. That takes us to 11 uh, plus four more on top of that. So I think we need about 15 redstone plus the one here. So 16 redstone. And currently we have 12 redstone. Although as luck would have it, we do have more dust here. And so getting more redstone really should be as simple as just sifting all of this down. Chat does make a good point here that we can probably get away with just two redstone repeaters. The system shown might be a little inefficient. Uh, let's go for that then. If we make two of these and preferably one of these and then also a dropper, which does require a little bit of cobblestone. Boom and boom. This should work. Uh, Chet suggested having two redstone in the middle here as opposed to uh, just a straight line of four repeaters. And I think that does look like it's going to work quite nicely. So we have a dispenser pointing upwards. Beehive is going to go in front of it. The bees can only come out of the front of the beehive there, but they can go in any side. So they're never going to come out the back, even though I don't, even if they could, they couldn't get anywhere because of the cobblestone. But then we have the comparator. We have the four or five pieces of redstone. One, two, three, four, and five. So when the honey level hits five, this will light up. And then underneath here, we're going to have a redstone repeater facing this way. And then we're going to have another redstone repeater right here, like that. Uh, because the dispenser is on the other side of that uh, oak log there, we're going to have regular redstone in the middle. And I think, chat, that that should work. We can get rid of some of this cobblestone. It's going to look a little janky. And, you know, in the future, we can always cover this up. I'll try and make it look a little nicer. But I think here we have the same system shown in the quest book here. We have the comparator right there going out. It's obviously flipped. If we looked at it from the other side, it would probably look a little bit uh, more similar to what we're actually uh, using here. And it's kind of hard to see from over here, but hopefully you get the idea. Uh, the beehive hits honey level five, triggers the redstone, triggers the dispenser, and everything should work. So we'll make a set of shears. We'll throw those shears into the uh, dispenser. I'll also uh, eat a few apples here as well. Hopefully fairly soon, we're going to be able to upgrade these apples to, uh, to honeyed apples. Uh, we could definitely do it with a way of getting to the dispenser more easily. So I think I'll try and get like a little staircase going here. That's going to allow us to kind of get down to that dispenser as and when we need to. Like this. Uh, so we'll throw you in like so. And then at that point, I think we're pretty much good to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pick up this beehive because I think the first thing that we want to do here is upgrade this beehive to a higher tier beehive. Specifically the uh, tier one beehive here, which we can do with the grass that we got earlier. Uh, the upgrade, by the way, here is that you'll see now uh, this can hold a maximum of four bees and five honeycombs. So I think by default, you can have three bees in the regular beehive. And I think when it gets to honey level five, you might get four honeycombs. Whereas with the tier one beehive, you can put four bees in there. And when it gets to honey level five, you'll get five honeycombs back. So essentially, you just get more bees. Uh, you can sustain more bees and you can get more honeycombs per level five honey level, if that makes sense. Either way, all we have to do for now is just put this down right about here and actually spawn in some kind of bee. And one nice thing about these beehives is it does tell you at the top as well the uh, the honey level that it's currently at. And right now you'll see we're at honey level zero. So let's go ahead and I guess we'll move one of 
these barrels here over into the B room. Because what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to generate our witch water on top of the mycelium. And right now we can't move that mycelium. But then we don't want to spawn the bees out here on the platform. We want to spawn the bees inside of the, the B room, right? So we'll put you in there. Oh, okay. So it looks like these tier beehives, by the way, go down the other way. Like the, uh, the beehive, the vanilla Minecraft beehive, when you place it down, the front faces towards you. Whereas with the tiered beehive, you've got to place it down from the back in order for it to work. You're looking for this little line here. Uh, this line is the front. The bees need to be able to access the front. Thank you to the Twitch chat for pointing that one out. But uh, once we have the witch water, we can put it in. We can then right click with the buzzing doll. And I'll close the door real quick. And we should see a bee start to spawn. Now, of course, we are going to want to get flowers in here. In order for the bee to actually work. But there is our first bee. The bee might have gone directly into the, uh, the hive there. I did see it spawn in briefly. Uh, oh, of course, it's dark. At night, the bees do hide and sleep uh, inside of the uh, inside of the hive. So if we sleep here, it should pop back out. And I think ideally we want the room to be kind of as full of flowers as possible to try and maximize the amount of time that the bee spends producing honey. There he is. Hopefully he's going to head on over to that, uh, that flower there. He's going to suck up a little bit of uh, pollen. Once he's sucked up all the pollen that he needs, he's going to head back to the, uh, to the old hive here. He's going to spend a little bit of time in there. As we go up, the amount of time they have to spend in the hive goes down. So you'll see a tier uh, two hive uh, reduces the hive time modification by 10%, which I think means they're going to spend 10% less time in the hive making honey. There he goes. And I think after about two minutes, he should pop back out here and we should see the honey level go up to one. So of course, this is a pretty slow system. However, we can make it faster by adding more bees. And I think that's exactly what we want to do here. We're going to get another bucket of witch water. We're going to use another buzzing doll. Um, I believe you can breed bees. I think if you right click a flower onto two bees, kind of in the same way that you would breed two cows with wheat, you can breed two bees together by right clicking two of them with like a poppy. I think that does work. And it's probably something uh, that we'll look into, uh, into doing momentarily here. Let's go ahead and grab another bucket of witch water and plop that in over here and get another bee going. We'll also plant down all these flowers that we do have. So this is now full of, uh, or almost full. Now it's full of uh, flowers. We're currently at honey level one, and we have one honeycomb in there. Um, our second bee should be coming out any second now. Um, unfortunately, they're on a bit of a staggered schedule. Um, I think they're both going to come out at the same time once night hits. But I guess while we wait for that, we can look at, uh, at making more bees using the buzzing doll. We could also look as well at making some of the other bees, although I guess we can't really look at making some of the other bees until we have honey, right? Because as we saw at the start of the stream, if we wanted something like the sand bee, we need honey box and honeycomb. And we're not going to get either of those until we've uh, cycled through quite a lot of these bees here. One thing that we do need to take into consideration now is the fact that when the dispenser is triggered and the beehive is sheared, the honeycomb that is produced is going to fly everywhere. So we need a way of collecting that honeycomb. And there are a couple of ways we can do it. If we type in uh, collector into JEI, we have the basic item collector, as well as the advanced item collector from the item collectors mod. We have the item collector from Cyclic. Uh, I'll bookmark both of these real quick. By the way, you can hover over an item and press A in JEI. I'll bookmark it over here. And there's also the vacuum hopper from Dark Utilities. All of these do essentially the same thing. They pick up items that are on the ground in a given area. However, I think of the three options, the basic item collector from item collectors is the cheapest. It requires four obsidian and then one ender pearl. So for this, we are gonna have to get four buckets of lava, which should be doable fairly easily. Uh, we could make some more crucibles pretty quickly now. And uh, we can of course get the uh, the clay and bone mill required. Oh no, and we, we of course have the cobblestone required to make the lava as well. So getting four obsidian shouldn't be too difficult the slightly harder part would be getting an ender pearl. However, I do believe that much in the same way that we've just made a bee using witch water and a buzzing doll, you can make a creepy doll, which if you add to witch water, will produce an enderman. And this guy is pretty easy to make. It's four black dye, which we get from the mystical black flowers that we made earlier. 
with two glowstone, one redstone, one porcelain doll, and one nether wart. And nether wart, much like nether quartz, can be gathered from soul sand. So you'll see now we're back at level zero, and we have five honeycombs. Because the honey level got to five, I've got to make sure I lock that door, uh, otherwise the bees will escape. Uh, the honey level got to five, the system was triggered, the shears were used. I assume if we go and look now, we'll see the shears are ever so slightly uh, worn. They are indeed. We can do this 237 times, so we are going to get, you know, a bunch of uh, honeycombs before those shears do eventually break. Um, and I guess if we wanted to, we could maybe have, like, you know, some kind of hopper feeding uh, shears into the dispenser to keep it going forever. But, uh, yeah, we have our, uh, our first lots of honeycomb, which is pretty nice. Um, if we do want to upgrade here to a higher level of hive, we're actually pretty close. We have the four honeycombs. All we need is four beeswax, and that's where the centrifuge comes in. So uh, there, are a quest, uh, there are quests in the quest book here for centrifuges. Um, but right now, we're going to have to go with the manual centrifuge because the regular centrifuge requires redstone flux, and right now we don't have any way of generating power. But uh, the manual centrifuge here is thankfully pretty easy to make. Uh, we need eight iron to make the two trap doors, uh, one barrel and one lever. Now, quick detour here. I think it's probably going to be worthwhile us looking at getting that hammer that's going to allow us to double our ores. We mentioned it a little bit in the last stream, but if we look at what we can do with iron ore, we can craft it with an ore crushing hammer to essentially double the amount of iron that we get. But to get the or crushing hammer, we do need uh, 10 iron to begin with. So I think I will take the 10 iron that we have, smelt that up, use that to make the or crushing hammer. And then from there, we're going to double all of the rest of the ores and iron that we make going forward. So once all the iron is done here, let's craft up that block of iron. And then if we're going to get the crushing hammer here, which I will bookmark, we just need two sticks and one string. And my inventory is very full. We can dump a few things here, but we'll grab two sticks and we've already got the string. Boom and boom. So now going forward, we can craft all of these up into iron ore and then we can take that iron ore, use the ore crushing hammer and duplicate that. It did take quite a bit of iron, like quite a bit of durability to make that happen, but we are now going to get 38 iron as opposed to the, uh, the 19 there. So if we need to make another hammer going forward, we can do that as well. We can probably also try duplicating these bees here potentially. I'm kind of thinking what I might do here, I might harvest all of the flowers because what I want to do is I want to duplicate, I want to breed these bees before they go back in the beehive. And I think come daytime, they're both going to fly out. And if there's no flowers for them to, uh, you know, acquire pollen from, I'm hoping they're going to stay out long enough for me to, uh, to try and breed them. So let's see, there's, oh, there they are, perfect. So if we just right click here and here, these two now love each other. They get their B action on, you know, we'll look at which I will give them some privacy. And then look at that achievement made. So now we have a tiny little baby bee who in 1,200 seconds, which I believe is 20 minutes, is going to become a full adult bee who is going to help his parents here in, uh, in producing more honey for us, which is beautiful. And then we can, you know, breed them again and get even more bees going and, and continue from there. Uh, at this point in time, we can go ahead and of course replant these to get them working on uh, on yet more honey our honey, honey level is at uh, four so we are uh, just a few minutes away here from yet more honeycombs and of course like i mentioned before we do now need that uh that centrifuge right so uh, we should be getting close to having enough iron we are we got 14 there so if we craft up two trap doors at that point all we need in order to make the manual centrifuge, which I'll also bookmark, is one barrel, which is just planks, and one lever, which is also fairly easy for us to do. So we'll do the lever, like so. And then over here, we should be able to get uh, enough planks fairly easily. And that should allow us to make the barrel required. And from there, we can make the manual centrifuge. Nice. So if we put that down, for now, we'll do it like over here. I believe with this, we can put in our honeycomb. I believe we also have to put in a glass bottle there because there is a chance that uh, while processing the honeycomb, we do get a honey bottle, which is also useful because we do need uh, some of these honey blocks in order to make the uh, spawn eggs for the different beasts that we're after. So uh, we should take some of the glass that we made earlier and uh, craft those up into some glass bottles here. We'll throw those in the bottom left slot. 
And then I believe we just grind. Yeah, so shift right click. And there we go. We didn't get any honey. We got one sugar, which is <laughs> not perfect. But I believe we kind of have to run through this to get the beeswax. That's really what we're after. Because if we can get four beeswax here, we can then use that in combination with some honeycomb to make the higher tier of beehive. This one right here, the tier two beehive, which can hold even more bees, produce even more honeycombs, and hopefully produce them even faster as well. And there we go. We got, uh, unfortunately, no honey, but we got one beeswax and five sugar. And as luck would have it, our next set of uh, five honeycomb is ready to go. This time around, we got one bottle of honey, but, uh, but no beeswax. So I will go ahead and make one more buzzing doll here. Uh, that, in combination with the baby bee, is going to get us up to uh, four bees in total, which is the maximum number of bees that we can have in uh, this tier one beehive at any one given time. So I think having four bees in here is going to be basically us making this beehive as fast as it can. Between streams, what I think I'm going to do is I think uh, we might move this box potentially, uh, but I think I'm probably going to look at trying to get multiple of these beehives up and running so we can really start to kind of exponentially increase the amount of honeycombs that we're producing right like having one of these is pretty slow it takes a little while to get the five honeycombs that come out of them uh, but if we get you know three of these five of these ten of these twenty of these hives uh, because they're not too hard to make uh, and we get a lot of bees you know in a room like this we can probably start to make honeycomb pretty quickly but for the rest of today's stream let's see if we can't get that item collector so Let's take some of our cobblestone here. And I don't actually know if in this version of Ex Nihilo, can you put more than that much cobblestone in there? I think the answer is no, unfortunately. We can't put in more than uh, one bucket's worth. We are going to need four buckets worth if we're going to get uh, four obsidian. Oh, okay. So we do have quite a bit of uranium here. And looking at the crucible, one of the best options, if not the best option that we have for heating up the crucible is this block of uranium here, which is eight uranium ingots and one uranium dust. So I think if we were to craft this up, and then if from there we were to go ahead and do something like this, uh, we actually only need nine uranium. But if we smelt that, we should be able to make that block of uranium, which should hopefully increase the speed at which we're producing lava by quite a bit. Eight uranium and one block of uranium. So we will make a new crucible here. If we do something like that, we're going to get another one. Once this one is done, this is almost done with its full bucket. Once that's done, we'll probably move that over and maybe look at getting like a second block of uranium as well, because getting that really shouldn't be uh, too difficult here, actually. Uh, we have one uranium there. So if we get uh, another eight going here, we can, uh, we can get another uranium block and have, you know, two crucibles that are working on producing... Uh, uranium at, uh, at on producing lava at, uh, at 5x speed which should hopefully be nice and fast so if we just do like this and like this and then put the cobblestone in as usual we can now see it doing um five ticks at a time and so what is 1000 divided by five divided by 60 so i think it's gonna take about three and a half minutes or three and just over i think it's gonna take just over three minutes to produce uh, one bucket there, as opposed to uh, over here where it's taking like five minutes, five and a half minutes. Now, I do think if we're going to make obsidian, I believe we have to get a stone barrel because I'm fairly certain that if we try and use a wooden barrel to make obsidian, if we put lava into a wooden barrel, that will end badly for us. So I will make a stone barrel here, also from next to Hello. We'll throw that down. Uh, for now, like right about here. And at that point, we should be able to take our lava, put that in over here. And then if you place water above that lava, like that, you get obsidian. Nice. And if we're going to make the item collector here, we just need four in total. So uh, let's go ahead and temporarily pick that up just so we don't lose the lava. Let's all lose the crucible. Let's move that. Let's put you back down in the middle. 
even though we probably don't really need this cobble generator anymore now that we have uh, this guy over here. So we could probably get rid of this, but we'll have it just in case. We'll also get our second uranium block. And just like the previous one, we'll put that down over here. Beautiful. While we wait for the rest of the lava to come in here, we can look at making this creepy doll. So the only thing that we really don't have here is the nether wart. And so I think it's probably going to be in our best interest to just look at sifting a bit more soul sand. The drop chance on nether wart is not particularly high. 10%. And it's still 10% even if we upgrade to a diamond mesh there. So uh, we're going to need approximately 10 soul sand for this to work, which shouldn't be too difficult. But might be a little tedious. Hey, there we go. We got uh, one nether wart. So what we should be able to do now, I think, is once we get our next bucket of witch water, we can make one more salt sand. We can then place that down. And I'm assuming that we can shift to make this grow faster. Oh, we can't. Oh, we can. Maybe we can. I actually don't know if that's working or not. Maybe I just got lucky there. No, that's not working. So we have the uh, the beeswax here now, which is nice. We've got uh, four beeswax in total. We did have to go through uh, maybe like 20, 25 honeycombs to get there. Uh, but now when we get the next batch of honeycombs, which should be coming fairly shortly here, we're only level of uh, four. Once we get that, we should be able to upgrade that hive there to uh, the tier two. I think if you break the hive while they're in it, they don't like that. So what we might have to do is much like we did before, we might have to wait until nighttime, get rid of all the flowers, sleep, and then when they all come out in the morning, we can break it and put down a new one. Maybe that will work. So chat is telling me that if I, even if they are out of the beehive, if we break the beehive, the bees are still going to die. However, I am being told that if we get the bees into bee jars first, we should be able to replace the hive without them well, i guess without them knowing but hopefully they'll like acclimate to the new hive and won't die so i think what we'll do is it's almost night we'll take all of these again and then come morning we will uh we'll come out we will collect them all in jars here and we'll throw down the new hive so one two three and I think there's one more hiding out in here. Unless the uh, the baby bee escaped. Oh, there he is. And four. Beautiful. Okay, so we have all of the bees on us. We're going to take this beehive. It's so close. It's unfortunate that it's so high on its honey level, but that's fine. We're going to take that, come over here, and we should be able to upgrade to a tier two beehive. At that point, hopefully, if we place this back down... and release the bees, they will uh, reacclimate to their new hive. I'm just gonna test with one before we release all of the bees. Hopefully we'll see him fly into the tier two beehive here. It looks like he's doing okay. They're not angry, which is good. Someone does make a, a good point that we should probably breed some of the bees if we can. Oh my goodness, if you hold shift, there's so much information about the bees. Uh, let's get the two adult bees out here and see if we can't... Oh, he's not... Uh, I don't think either of these two are ready to get down. Oh, maybe... Oh, this guy is, but this guy's not. Oh, well, this guy is. Oh no, he's a baby bee. Okay, so I think, unfortunately, we did lose a flower there. That's fine either way. But uh, the good news is that this is working. And so now, when we do get more bees, we can hold up to a maximum of six bees in this beehive, and hopefully they are uh, faster at producing honeycomb as well. How are we doing over here? Our nether wart is slowly but surely getting there. We're very close to being able to get the creepy doll. Um, of course, the creepy doll does only spawn one enderman, so there is a fairly good chance that even if we do get one creepy doll here, uh, that we don't necessarily get an ender pearl. So uh, it could quite possibly be the case that we might have to get um, a couple of um, of creepy dolls in order to actually get the ender pearl that we need. All right. It took a crazy amount of time, but we have another one. We actually got three another one, which is beautiful. And so, finally, chat, we should be able to make a creepy doll. 
we should be able to get a bit of witch water. And we should be able to spawn in an enderman here using the witch water. Now, I think I will make like an iron sword here real quick. Just to make it a little easier. We'll do that. Of course, the enderman not going to attack us straight away. And of course, we're not guaranteed to get an ender pearl here. So it's quite possible that at the start of the next stream, we might have to come back and, and spawn a few more of these in. But just in case, let's do that. And then let's hide under this little convenient 3x3 platform that the enderman cannot attack us under. Just one ender pearl here would be ideal. Look at that, chat. Perfect. All right. So now if we combine that up with the four obsidian, we get the basic item collector. We can then go and make, uh, we could make a chest, but I guess we could also go ahead and upgrade that to a barrel here or, or a drawer even. And then from there, this will collect five blocks away. So I think maybe what we want to do is do something, at least for now, like this. And I'm, assu I'm assuming I can put down the uh, item collector, not there, but ideally here. Oh, I guess maybe not. Does it have to go on top of the, uh, on top of the drawer? I guess it does. That's less than ideal, but also perfectly fine. It just means we're going to have to move the, uh, the actual drawer here inside. I was really hoping I could put it like up against the, uh, the drawer there, uh, because five blocks away is here. We can't put it on the outside, uh, but what we can do for now, at least is we can put it here and put the item collector down like that. So now when the honeycombs fly out of this area, hopefully they're going to be collected and deposited into that drawer. So, you know, the honeycombs, they fly out and I'm just pressing Q to drop them. They get sucked up and they end up in here. So hopefully next time when we come back, we're going to come back to a decent number of honeycombs in this drawer here. We can use some of those to uh, craft up the blocks of honeycomb. We can run some of them through the centrifuge to get some regular honey. And we can look at getting higher tier beehives as well as some of those other bees like the sand bees the snowball bees the zombie bees etc all the ones listed on the list here and then we can breed all of these bees together with each uh, each other and with the bees that we already have to get basically every bee in the game thus getting all of the different honeycombs that we can use then to get other resources so between streams i think i'm going to make some more beehives maybe breed some more bees try and get quite a few more uh, into this room here i'll probably also go ahead and make a few more boxes so we can start work on even more bees. And then next time we'll come back, we'll look at, you know, working through more of the bee stuff as well as looking potentially into getting into the beginnings of power, starting to generate some power so we can use the automatic centrifuge and hopefully maybe set up some systems to automatically uh, process our honeycomb so we don't have to do it all manually. Uh, and of course, look at some of the other mods as well. Um, I think to get into power, we do have to go through Batania. Uh, it mentions it over here. Uh, yeah, Batania opens up the dielectric paste for power. So we will have to do a bit of that as well. Um, also, we might as well go ahead and click that. Look at that. Chapter one is complete. But with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. 